in South Asia countries. My name is Devika Purandiri and I am the head of arts for South Asia. Um, I'm based um, I'm based in India and it's lovely to be speaking to you all today and taking you through um, taking you through our new program. Thank you so much for your interest in Climate Future South Asia and thank you so much for carving this hour out of your really busy schedules to attend this briefing. Let me just share my screen. I hope uh, you can all, uh, I hope that you can all see my screen. Yeah. Okay, great. Yes. I'm also joined by my wonderful colleague, Maliha, who's handling and supporting for the tech on this call, and she will be letting people um, into the call as well as addressing some of your queries in the chat box. If you have any queries, please feel free. Uh, in terms of the tech, please feel free to put them into the chat box. I'm also joined by my colleagues from across the South Asia network, uh, my arts leads from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, Sri Lanka and Nepal. So lovely to have you all here and all of them will be supporting me today uh, with the moderation of the questions and answers. Um, and if there's any particular specific questions, um, I will sort of direct some of you uh, towards them. So thank you so much uh, for joining everybody. And without further ado, let's start with the briefing. Before we get into the details, a couple of housekeeping notes. This session will last for around one hour. There will be a presentation for about 30 minutes and the rest of the time will be for the questions and answers. The session will be recorded and shared on the British Council channels after the session. So Maliha, if you could just start the recording. Please mute yourself when you're not speaking to the group or somebody will switch off your mic if you forget to do so. During the presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to engage with the chat box and put them all in the chat box and we will try and address them during the questions and answers. You may also please you may also use the raise your hand function and allow us to call on you to unmute yourself during the discussion. The session will be recorded and if you do not wish to be recorded, please switch off your video and keep your microphone on mute. If you were interested in applying for this grant, you must have a good level of English uh, or have some or have support from somebody with a good level of English, a translator or an interpreter when needed to ensure smooth communication. Please be assured that good a good level of English is not the assessment criteria for the grant. However, a basic understanding of English will be required and your grant application will not be scored on the level of English. With that, uh, I'd just like to cover a little bit about what the sessions today will cover. We're going to be talking a little bit about a brief introduction into Climate Future South Asia and what the program entails. I will talk a little bit about the types of projects that we're looking to support, who can apply. I will go through the eligibility and assessment criteria, as well as the timeline and key milestones in the weeks to come. I will also be taking you through a few key details in applying via the submittable portal and a few examples of past projects that we have funded that are relevant to this particular theme. After the presentation, we will have a questions and answers where I will address some of the questions that have come through the chat box, um, as well as if you have any questions and you feel like raising your hand and speaking about that, it is an open forum for discussion. So looking forward to, uh, to looking forward to the rest of the session and to engaging with all of you. What is Climate Futures? Um, climate Future South Asia is a new British Council program which is supporting climate action in the creative industries. Through grants, we will support the creation of artistic responses to climate issues and encourage the integration of sustainable practices within cultural operations. Successful grantees will not just receive funds to deliver their project, but we will also provide them with opportunities for mentorship throughout their project from leading UK advisors. Bringing all of this together will be the creation of a culture and climate community of practice where selected grantees will have the opportunity to come together, exchange ideas, share experiences, and build collective knowledge to champion sustainable change. The deadline for applications is the 25th of November, 2024, and we will be accepting applications up to 11.59 GMT. Please note, this is not the British Standard Time, but this is GMT, which is more universal. 
as you can see in the bottom right corner, some of the key themes that we will be accepting grants in will be around knowledge creation, sustainable practices, and design innovation. And I will be talking with a little bit about some of the types of projects that, that we will be looking to support. However, please note that this is not this is not a limited list and we're looking for projects. This is just a guiding sort of factor for you to be able to start off with your ideas. However, if any of your ideas or proposals fit outside of this particular purview, that's absolutely fine. As long as it fits within the key themes of knowledge creation, sustainable practices and design innovation, projects will be accepted. So just a little bit, just a few examples. We're looking for, within knowledge creation, we're looking for artistic responses that create knowledge about communities impacted by climate change and inspire a call to action or awareness. It could be via prototypes, it could be via visual arts installations, but we're really looking for solution-driven approaches and solution-driven arts experiences. It could be literature publications featuring thought leadership, insight pieces, research on the impact of climate change or particular climate challenges. You could apply via digital platforms, toolkits, uh, you know, that promote sustainability within the cultural sector, and that can be replicated across the arts landscape. And this is a very important aspect of, um, of the application, the replicability of artistic projects across creative sectors. Um, and that's exactly the, you know, exactly the kind of projects that we're looking for. We're looking for projects which are centered around the circular economy, for example, in craft or sustainable fashion. You could apply for projects that use arts as a catalyst for creating knowledge and exploring solutions for climate change in innovative and unique ways. It could be exhibitions, it could be roundtables, it could be conferences, hackathons, or research activities that explore a particular theme addressing climate change. Within sustainable practices, we're looking for projects that focus on the design and implementation of sustainability strategies or processes for your organization. Within this particular section, you could look at projects that look at conducting carbon emission audits for your creative enterprise, training and capacity building for your employees or for your group of creative professionals in the sustainability or climate sensitivity space. You could look at implementation of sustainability practices or reimagining spaces at one-off events, festivals, or performing arts venues. You could look at developing toolkits, manifestos, signages at your venues or festivals. And in this particular section, we're really looking at systemic infrastructural change for employees or for members working in the, in the creative landscape. The third theme around design innovation, we're looking to support projects that optimize infrastructure to enhance climate change awareness and sustainable approaches within the art sector. It could be things like developing green spaces in your venues to raise awareness about climate change and make an impact on your target communities. It could be architectural inputs or architectural prototypes that demonstrate innovative approaches to incorporating sustainability in venues or replicability in the wider art sector. It could be design inputs that demonstrate sustainable approaches in any artistic practice, for example, textile design, pottery, or any other creative enterprise or creative practice that has originally known to be um, environmental, a huge environmental footprint. Um, and, and if there's any kind of design inputs that you would like to propose that would help support this and address this challenge, these are the kind of projects that we'd be happy to support. Like I said, these are just guiding examples and a guiding framework. But if your project idea fits outside of this list, but within the key themes that are mentioned in the bottom right corner, we're happy to, to engage with those and just to look at supporting those as well. Who can apply? Um, as you've seen from the website, all of the is Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka are e eligible for the open call. You could be an individual artist, festival, performing arts institute, venue, creative studios, arts institutions, um, artist collectives. You could be a venue. Um, so, I mean, again, this is a guiding sort of framework and a guiding principle. However, if your organization fits outside of the purview of this, but is recognized by your respective governments, we're happy to accept those. The only exception to this is funding bodies or organizations that are primarily focused 
on providing funding um, to organizations will not be eligible to apply. I'll speak a little bit about eligibility um, and some of the conditions for eligibility. What you must need, what you will need to have is a complete application, including the project budget and CV of your project leader. And all of this should be received within the deadline, which is the 25th of November via, via the external submittable application site. I will take you through submittable um, in, in a while towards the later part of this presentation. However, please note that these three things are very important. The, a complete application with all the answers, um, where all the questions have been answered, a project budget and the CV of the project leader. And if even one of these areas is incomplete, it will not pass via the eligibility stage. So please ensure that all of these areas are completed. Your organizations or individual artists who are applying must be based in one of the eligible South Asian countries, which is Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Pakistan, or Sri Lanka. Applicants from India should have a valid FCRA certificate. Project proposals should have a timeline ending no later than the 31st of January. And funding bodies are not eligible, as mentioned earlier. A little bit about the selection criteria. So we will have a diverse panel ranging from experts within the British Council in the field of climate change and its adaptation in creative contexts. Applications will be judged and assessed on the basis of quality and impact. So we're looking for really high quality, innovative um, approaches and new ideas that are impactful and that we feel have a positive outcome on the arts community. We're looking for projects that are feasible um, we're looking for projects that have the potential to be scaled up and replicated in other areas and other sectors. Of course, have a realistic project plan with clear timelines, clear milestones, and a reasonable budget. We're also looking for projects that address environmental challenges, which is the core crux and the core theme of the program, and that also incorporate equality, diversity, and inclusion within their operations as um, um, you know, in, in the, into their daily operations. And I'll talk a little bit more about equality, diversity, and inclusion later. But if you visited our websites, there is more detailed information on the FAQs um, and in the application briefing notes about equality, diversity, and inclusion and how your projects will be, will be assessed based on this. A little bit about the timeline and a few key milestones in the weeks to come. So you have a few more weeks up till um, the deadline of the application, which is the 25th of November. Beyond the 25th of November, we will not be accepting any applications. Your applications will be evaluated by the British Council between December and January 2020, uh, December 2024 and January 2025. And we aim to let all the applicants know about the outcome of their applications latest by January 2025. And in case there are any delays at our end, um, we will ensure that the same is being reflected in your delivery timelines as well. So don't worry if we reach out uh, to you a little bit beyond January, we will give you that buffer time to end your projects as well a bit later than, uh, than originally planned. Successful applicants will require to be will require to sign a British Council grant agreement and payment will be made 30 days following the receipt of each invoice. There will be orientation sessions for grantees. We will run sort of briefing sessions on managing budgets, monitoring and evaluation, marketing and communications, et cetera, which will cover all the requirements of your grant project delivery. And all of this will take place in February 2025. Uh, so do ensure that you include this a week of orientation sessions during your, you know, when you're planning your timeline and your budgets, do ensure that you incorporate um, a week for planning um, in February. During the delivery of your grant from February to January, a British Council staff will be in communication with you for support and progress updates. As mentioned earlier, you will also be connected with mentors and UK advisors. Um, and uh, based on the kind of projects that get selected, all of you can sort of collectively and mutually decide in terms of how often do you want to meet. Um, and, you know, there will be a sort of collective reporting mechanism that a British Council staff will communicate with you uh, for all kinds of progress updates for the project. 
The grant activity as of now must be completed by 31st January 2026. But in case there are any delays from our side in disseminating the contracts and dispersing the funds, we will ensure that you have been given a little bit of an extension. Um, in terms of reporting, the project completion report should be submitted within 30 days of the end of the project. For projects longer than six months, an interim report should be submitted by the end of month five of the project. And project closure reports must include quantitative data as well as an impact analysis of your project. All of this will be, um, you will receive guiding notes and toolkits for all of this during the orientation sessions for all the selected grantees. And you could also receive mentorship and support from um, UK sort of specialists in this area. Um, a little bit about how to apply. We urge and request you all to read the application toolkit, the application briefing notes, and the frequently asked questions thoroughly. Speak to different people, bounce off ideas, collaborators if required before you apply, just to, you know, just to sort of run ideas and proposals by them. Form your project idea in a, in a way that it is feasible, it is realistic, um, and it is scalable at the same time. Plan to complete the submittable application form before the 25th of November. Always read the guidance very carefully. Please continue to look at the website. The information there keeps getting updated um, as and when we have briefing sessions. Therefore, have a look at all of the FAQs and the guidance very carefully. And if you have any questions, we've set up an inquiries form. Please feel free to reach, reach out to us and be as detailed as possible with your questions and your queries so we can guide you um, in a very specific way as well. So applying through the submittable portal, submittable is, is our external website for all applications for the Climate Futures grants. Some of you who've applied to British Council grants before might be familiar with this, but what you will need to do is you will need to create a free submittable account. You can use your personal email addresses to create this. You will not be able to view the application form until you have an account. So please, uh, so please ensure that um, uh, please ensure that you've created your free account as soon as possible. The web page at the end of the web page, you will see that there are uh, there is a PDF form of the questions that are unsubmittable. So what you can do, and as best practice, it's highly recommended, is to keep your answers ready offline. Um, and then when you open submittable, copy paste your answers into submittable just so that you don't have any, you know, just just, you know, in case of any unexpected technical issues, it would be always good to have a backup plan as well. But please note that we will not be accepting applications that come to us via PDFs. It all has to be via submittable. If you have any questions or concerns in creating a submittable account, um, submittable also has a tech support page where you can reach out to them directly um, and ask them for any kind of support that you need. Alternatively, you can contact us um, at the form link that I mentioned, and Miniha will also put that in the chat box. Uh, but please feel free to reach out to us. We request you to give us two days working, two working days to, before we respond to you. Um, so please feel free to engage with us via these forms. Consent, we will be requiring you to agree that we keep and share your information. So whatever email addresses that you provide for the purposes of the grant application, we require you to sign off on your consent for us to use this during the duration of your grant project. A couple of things that you need to keep in mind that your contact details will be required. Um, the submittable platform also lets you save your application draft as you go along, so you don't have to, so you can start filling in the, the answers and then keep saving it. And please make sure that all your details are correct. Once you press the submit button, further editing will not be permitted. We will require you to submit your CVs as attachments, uh, portfolio links, website links, etc. All of that will be required, your, your links to your social media, etc. So please prepare ahead and keep all of this ready. We've also enabled the collaboration uh, feature on Submittable, so you can invite your teammates or any other people that are working with you on the project uh, to come on and so all of you can work on the application form together. Please note that the application must be made in English, and as mentioned earlier, 
we will not be assessing the applications based on the quality of English. It will be based on the quality of your proposal. However, a basic level of English is required to finish the application form. A couple of things that you need to keep in mind as well, review the criteria in the FAQs as well as in the application briefing notes. Think about a few things. Think about what is the exact climate challenge that your project is focusing? Do you think your proposed interventions are scalable? Think about very solution-oriented approaches um, to whatever you're proposing. Think about what you are going to do and why and how you are going to achieve it. Assessors will need to seek clarity in terms of the project activities and how you're going to achieve all of those project activities. Think about what is innovative and unique in your proposal and try and articulate that in your application. What are the short term and long term impacts that your project is trying to achieve? Think about your project plan and timeline. Think about the budgets. Aside from the questions which you can answer in free text, we will also ask you to complete a spreadsheet. Please download the project budget template from the website and complete your proposed budget with estimated amounts in GBP. So please note that all of the amounts that you mentioned have to be um, in GBP and during the time of dispersal of funds for the selected grantees, it will all be done via a particular British Council planning rate for that month. But as of now, all of your grant applications should be submitted in, in GBP. A few considerations to what makes an innovative proposal. Think about what specific climate challenge your proposal addresses that has not been tackled effectively before. How can you design a solution that is scalable, replicable, and adaptable to future needs? What is the need for your project within the arts sector? And how will your project impact the wider arts communities? These are all questions that you need to ask yourselves when you're planning your application and think about articulating and think about how you're going to articulate all of this in the application as well. Think about the targeted reach of your project. Who are your target audiences? Can you, can you sort of quantify them and put them in your application? Who are your beneficiaries and how will you reach them? How will you communicate the impact of your project to the wider arts community? And how will you ensure the long-term sustainability of your project beyond the period of funding? We are aware that not all projects will have public audiences or participants specifically in the sustainable practices and the optimizing of infrastructure sections, but the way you communicate your project depends on your objectives. So talk about, um, you know, talk about your objectives and you know, clarify whether uh, you know, who your beneficiaries are and who your audiences will be. Please do think about access. Um, and, and access in two ways, of course. So one is at the application stage. If you need any support in accessing submittable. Um, if you identify or if you know somebody that identifies as disabled and wants to apply but is unable to access, um, you know, access submittable, please reach out to us via the inquiry forms uh, and we will try and support you in every way that we can. Uh, please also think about access at the project delivery stage and ensure that you've included this in your application as well. So if you have public facing events or if you have festivals or exhibitions, um, you know, please ensure that your events um, that you're proposing via the grants are accessible to all. Um, and again, if you look at the FAQs and if you look at the application briefing notes, there are more detailed notes and information with respect to access. So have a look at that. And if you have any further questions, please reach out to us via the forms. Please note that all the applications must be submitted through the submittable portal by 11.59 on the 25th of November. Any inquiries about the process can be sent to the forms below. Please feel free to engage with us. As mentioned earlier, we, we try and monitor this um, every day and we will try and reach out to you within two working days. For any technical support with Submittable, if you're stuck anywhere in making an application or refreshing the pages or any technical support that you need, there is a support page on the Submittable website whom you can reach out to. They are very prompt. They reach out to you immediately. Um, so please feel free to sort of direct all of the technical queries to them and all of the sort of programmatic queries 
Um, if you feel like engaging with, please feel free to reach out to us. A little bit about, um, sorry, a few examples of projects that are relevant uh, to this particular grant and that we've supported in the past. So the first example is of a project called Gender Ecologies, which ran in Pakistan a couple of years ago. And this was a global program which explored the intersections of gender, climate, sustainability, and heritage through built environments and community. The project uh, was basically based on, um, on Yasmin Lari's designs, and she created a video tutorial, a video toolkit on how to build, uh, you know, which, which basically contains step-by-step -step instructions on how to construct low-cost bamboo and earth structures. Uh, these structures included an uh, like a earthen stove, a Pakistani chula. Uh, it also consisted of a room for shelter and a toilet for privacy. And this was basically responding um, to the challenges, to climate challenges posed by modern urban settlements. Um, and I think these prototypes were, you know, fairly scalable. And as a result of the project, several new resources were created as an aftermath of this project. Over 25 institutions became involved with a wide impact um, in, you know, across the across the areas in which they worked. Um, we also had an installation that we created as a prototype and sort of um, had these installations presented at different festivals um, across the UK and Pakistan as well. So this is an example. Have a look at the FAQs as well. There are additional examples of projects. Um, and you can have a look at our websites uh, where you will get to know a little bit more about uh, these projects. You could also have a look at the video tutorials, but this is exactly the kind of impact that we're looking at. And these are the impact areas that we're looking at. So where, you know, how do you sort of make these worlds meet, bring indigenous knowledge together uh, with sort of modern day solutions. And that's exactly that we're exactly projects that we're looking at supporting. This other project is a project from India, very similar to Yasmin Lari's project. Uh, this was um, this was again a solution-driven prototype um, that was built uh, to create awareness about um, to create awareness and to create more emphasis on um, on how much water we use as a society. And the prototype basically spoke about um, uh, the, the prototype basically highlighted how much water is being wasted and created um, a prototype that emphasized circularity and spoke about the interconnections between humans and the environment, the food chain um, and technology and community sort of coming together. So again, bringing together of indigenous knowledge to challenge modern day climate problems and climate challenges. Um, so again, you know, the prototype was a visual arts installation and it was exhibited at several festivals in India. There were a few tutorials and resources that were created as a result of this project um, and again disseminated to beneficiaries um, and to target audiences of this project. So these are the kind of things that we'd be looking at supporting. Another project, uh, this is a project from Indonesia and this is via the recent Connections Through Culture program that they ran in Asia Pacific. Um, and this is basically um, an informative series of comic books, uh, which basically just talks about a certain, like they've identified certain climate challenges in Indonesia. And this particular book talks about these challenges and it was sort of piloted in different schools and to a really wide international audience, creating awareness about the issues and their potential solutions. So this is another example of an artistic output that can work as a catalyst to creating awareness um, and sort of raising awareness about these issues and talking about solutions. But I think solutions are a very important aspect of this particular program, and that's something that we're really looking for. That brings me to the end of this presentation, and we can now open the floor to any questions. Um, before I move on to that, again, I, I'm going to stress on the fact that you need to review the toolkit, review the websites thoroughly, have a look at the FAQs. All of the questions that you might have could be answered um, in those questions. So please feel free to read those at your leisure, read those thoroughly. Contact us via the MS forms and we'll be happy to help you and support you uh, with in whatever capacity that we can.
Thank you so much. And maybe if I stop sharing my screen, I could have a look at the chat box. And if there are any questions. Devika, there are already a couple of questions that have come in. Um, yeah. I think you can start with one was on the recording, but I think Maliha has already responded on that. Uh, the next one is from Mahanez. Uh, Mahanez. Yeah. Sorry, I'm very bad with pronunciation. Apologies on that. Uh, but yeah, do you want to uh, see that question or should I just read out the question for you? Yeah, I'll just look at it. But Manez, if you want to unmute yourself and just uh, speak about it, that's fine as well. Sure. Um, thanks. Uh, so my name is Mahinaz. And so my question was that as an individual artist, um, how does the team structure works? Because I feel like there's an importance on that and you want a credible team to work with it. But if I'm applying as an individual applicant, how will that work? And the second part is that um, am I allowed to have uh, institutional or academic partnerships and collaborations? And how will that kind of compute within the individual artist banner? Absolutely. Very Thank good you. question. So to answer the first part of your question, yes, you can apply as an individual artist. Um, obviously, we do understand that individual artists or people working freelance or in, in, you know, via consultancies do not have team structures and team members. But if you can demonstrate and articulate how you would achieve all of your project goals single handedly, that should be fine. You are it is possible. We, we do encourage you to have institutional partnerships and collaborations if you want to collaborate with other artists or other institutions that's absolutely recommended um, and we're happy to recognize those as well however you will need to have whoever's applying will need to have a lead um, a lead project lead basically who's applying who will be in touch with the British Council throughout the course of the project so either way I hope I've been able to answer your question Right. So just to clarify, like uh, as an individual artist, I can have a team. Um, yes. For the project. OK, great. Thank yes. you so much. Yeah. Uh, Devika, before you go to the hands up, uh, there are a couple yeah. more questions in the chat box. I think if we yeah. can address that first, then we can go to people's hands up, if that's OK. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The next questions around budget allocations. Um, so we don't have country wise specific budget provisions. This is a regional program and we're looking at the budget holistically across South Asia. We're looking at supporting about eight to 10 projects in total. And we don't really have, I mean, we're not really thinking of a quota as such that there'll be two projects from each of the countries. We're just looking for like really good quality projects. And that might be like, you know, there'd be four really good projects from Sri Lanka, for example. And, you know, I mean, it just depends on the projects. Um, and we're looking at our budget from, you know, from a South Asia lens. So there's no quota as such. Um, or a country-wise specific budget provision. I hope I've been able to answer your question. The next question uh, from Dhawal Kothari. It's an FCRA one, so if you'd like me to take that, is yeah. that okay? Do you want to take that? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Tawal. Uh, this is Roshni from the India Arts team. Um, just to mention, and I know that FCRA will come up uh, quite a bit, uh, but unfortunately, given that this is an open grant call, FCRA is a requirement. Uh, as an individual applicant, it is important to either work with another institution or an organization that has an FCRA, um, because unfortunately, this is a requirement and we aren't able to make any exceptions on this particular one. And then I think his second question, Devika, if you want to take on this one, which is regards to, um, I think anybody who has um, received a grant from us in the past two years, does it impact um, the evaluation of their proposal? No, so this won't impact the evaluation of your proposal. The reason we want, um, we want to know whether you've um, received grants is to see whether on what projects they are. Just a quick point to note that if you've if you've received a grant for one particular project in the past, we will not be able to offer you a grant for the same project. Um, you know, it's it's you know, it's just if you're able to articulate in terms of how you've scaled up that project or how the entire scope of the project has shifted um, in since the last time that you received the funding. That's something that we can consider, uh, but we will not be able to consider it for the sort of same project just in a different city or a different location. It will have to be 
uh, something that you've sort of scaled up and you've sort of evolved um, over time. And that's the only reason that we've asked this question. Uh, so it's not going to impact. So whether you've not, even if you've not got any funding from the British Council in the past two years, it doesn't matter. Great. The next yeah. question is from Uda. Um, this one slightly relates to the previous um, the previous question yeah. you responded, but I think uh, it was more specific around how many grants are available, and if there are multiple grants, are they divided by country type of project? Which I think that part you've responded to, but yeah. maybe just yeah. to give a little more clarity on the number of grants available. Yeah, so like I mentioned, we're going to offer eight to ten grants depending on the kind of applications that we get. Um, like I said, they're not divided by country. The top eight from across uh, South Asia will be awarded. The top eight or 10 uh, across South Asia will be awarded. We will not be looking at the type of projects either. Um, we would obviously like diversity in the way, you know, in the way that we receive applications and the kind of projects that we're supporting. Uh, but again, I think it's just the applications that score the highest at the assessment stage will be um, getting the grants so yeah we will not be there's no there's no specific number in terms of type of project as well uh has hazib had put in a question but his hand is also up so in case you want to go to hazib first then we can go to fahim yeah. hazim do you want to go ahead yeah. with your question hazim, do you want to come in just you'll have to your, unmute un yeah yeah Okay, if he's unable to, maybe just we can respond to I'll the question answer. in the chat. Yeah, I'll just yeah. answer. So certificates will not be given at the end of the session, but there will be lots of opportunities for showcase on social media. There will be lots of opportunities for you to feed into thought leadership pieces that are sort of led on by the British Council. Um, there will be a lot of opportunities for you to engage with mentors uh, that are selected from the UK. Um, and we're expecting this organic sort of exchange of knowledge and ideas uh, between all of us to feed into this ecosystem that we're trying to create. Um, and you will have the opportunity uh, to be part of sort of conferences and think tanks and, you know, contribute some of your thoughts and what you've done in larger forums. Uh, and I think that is something that we see as value. It, it won't really be certificates, but you'll get a lot of sort of coverage um, on our social media channels um, and sort of in this ecosystem that we build as a byproduct of the grant. Um, so do you want to go to Fahim as well now? Yes, Fahim, do you want to come in? Uh, yes, am I audible easily? Yes. OK, fantastic. Uh, so I would like, uh, I would like Answer a question to be answered based on uh, performing arts eligible and asked by Amateur Bar. I also, my person, like my question would be is there a preference between setting up, uh, uh, for example, if I want to do a performing arts based uh, uh, activity or a documentary styled awareness uh, activity, and uh, that I want want to take uh, first develop in a rural set uh, in an urban setting and then take it to uh, the rural areas where it uh, may disseminate more relevant information uh, what preference do you see uh, in terms of weightage on uh, urban and rural uh, influence and impact no so i don't think that i i don't think we're looking at that sort of rural versus urban, uh, you know, that there's, you know, we're not looking at that kind of sort of differentiation between impact. As long as you can demonstrate and articulate how your project is going to, you know, as you can articulate who your beneficiaries are, who your target audience is, and what you're trying to achieve at the start of your application. And then via the journey of your application, show us how you're going to reach this level of impact. That's, you know, that's what matters to us. We're not looking at um, you know, we're not looking at supporting more projects in the rural areas or, you know, focusing towards the urban areas. That's not something that we can say at this stage. It really depends on what you've set out to do and what you think is um, is impactful and who your beneficiaries and, and, and your sort of impact groups are and how you aim to achieve that. So we're looking at that sort of journey um, of you as managing your project um, as project lead. Um, so it could be, you know, you could sort of have projects that span across these areas, but how you demonstrate the level of impact and how scalable um, your project is and whether it can be replicated to other contexts, I think that's something that we'll be looking at. Okay, and, and, and the 
I'm sorry, I can't hear you very clearly. It's from him. Based on the LHP, the question from him. Fahim, I'm not able to hear you very clearly. Do you think you can just yeah, type I'm, it in I'm, the chat box? I'm actually speaking on behalf of Ahmed Shabbar, who has just asked, are projects based on performing arts eligible? So that's also my question. So I thought maybe. Yeah, performing arts. Um, so like I mentioned, I, you know, and if you look at the FAQs and the briefing notes as well, performing arts are eligible. However, um, this is a very impact focused program and we're really looking at solution driven approaches to um, be, you know, to be adapted in the uh, in the sort of arts and creative sectors. So you can have performing arts as one of your main elements of the project, but if that particular piece of work is um, is a call to action or is inspiring a certain kind of awareness or is like moving certain groups of people. And if it really has that sort of large scale impact and it's it's talking to people that you've never spoken to before and reaching out to communities that you've never worked with before and really addressing sort of um, challenges in a way that's, you know, challenging the status quo of how it's been done before, then yes. But like I said, focus on the impact of your work as opposed to the outcome in itself. Focus on what you, who you're going to reach out to. How is it going to sort of look at solutions and how are you going to sort of address some of the challenges um, in this world of climate change conversations? Okay, um, we have a couple just to say that Thank there you. are a couple of hands still. And we also yeah. have a series of questions, which I'm sure we may not be able, I'm guessing you may not be able to go through in this, but we could maybe collate them and you can also respond to them if time runs out. Um, shall we go to the next one? Uh, Munon? Yeah. How, um, yeah, okay, sorry, do you want to? Munon, do let's you want to go, go off? And then... yeah. yeah. Let's go to Munon and then let's go to uh, the, the ones in the chat box as well. Do you want to unmute? Yeah, I don't know. Is there? Okay, I okay, think let's, maybe. Let's go to the chat box. Yeah, let's go to the chat box. Uh, let's go to. Um, Omanan's oh, unable to unmute. Um, Maliha, would you be able to help with that? Mm, I can just mute her. I can't unmute her. Um, Monon, can you uh, rejoin? Or if you can just put your or question just, yeah. in the chat box, that's yeah. Even if you can just put your question in the chat box, that's fine. I'm just going to go to the next question by from Rizwan. How detailed and elaborate should the activities be in the application we are proposing in 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 the proposal? So there is a word limit on all of the questions, and when you open submittable, you will see that or you will see all of the word limits. Within that word limit, try and be as detailed as possible. Try and be very clear. Use keywords, um, bullet points, um, mm -hmm. anything that makes it easier for assessors uh, to read the application. Uh, can I ask now? Uh, now, am I audible? Uh, yes. Devika? Okay, thank you. Yes. So, uh, there is some problem I had to rejoin. Anyways, I have to leave. So the quick question too. Uh, you already mentioned that as an individual artist, uh, anyone can apply, but you also suggested that um, it's your suggestion to collaborate with an institution. But my question is, is it mandatory to collaborate with an institution? What if I don't, uh, you know, I can't uh, like manage uh, an institution in that short time and all my life like past six or seven years i'm working alone individually and i have managed uh, projects on my by own and everything so will that impact my application if i don't collaborate with any, any institution no collaboration with institutions is not mandatory you can apply as an individual artist as long as you can demonstrate and show track record of being able to manage projects on your own and whatever you've set out to do, if 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 the assessors can tell that this is something that this person can achieve uh, via your application, then that's fine. It's not mandatory to collaborate with an institution. Thank you so much, Devika and Roshni. I had to leave on. And um, thank you so much for having this, uh, you know, info session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. There's another question from for the next question is from Jacob. 
Do graphic designs, infographics, digital animations fit within the definition of artistic content, or does it have to be physically produced artwork or installations? Graphic designs, infographics, all of this does fit. Yes, it does fit within the definition of artistic content. Just you know, referring back to my last example about like comics um, or digital animations, you know, as long as um, as long as they're able to sort of inspire or call to action, talk about issues that have not been spoken about before, really have that sort of large scale impact and actually, um, you know, looking at solutions, um, then yes, it's projects that we can we can look at and, and they do fit within the definition of artistic content, but it's all in how you write and articulate the level of impact that you will be achieving. Um, uh, there's another question uh, from Mahinas. Does the project have to start after February? Can my project start from Jan 2025? I understand that the selection and orientation will be wrapped uh, by Feb 2025. Yes, your projects can start uh, from Jan 2025. However, please note for selected grantees, um, the funds will be dispersed to your accounts only 30 days after signing of the contracts. So just ensure that you've planned that in your timeline as well. But yes, they can start a bit earlier. That's fine. Another question from Ramisha. Are we allowed to get external funding if the budget exceeds the grant amount? Yes, you can get external funding. However, at the time of application, we will need to be assured that this external funding will definitely be coming. And it should not be that um, if you don't get that last bit or external funding that the project will stall, you know, you just need to make that very clear in your application. And there is a question um, that asks, that addresses this particular area. So just ensure that the external or further funding has been confirmed uh, when you're applying for the British Council grant. The next question from Samira. If we intend to work with organizations or institutions such as universities, do you need a letter of intent or the like, or is it sufficient to write in the proposal how we aim to? In this case, in this, like, there have been grants the British Council has produced in the past where collaboration is a mandatory element. But in this case, um, of course, you know, we are, it, it's the project lead and it's, the, you know, it's, it's the project leads word about how the project lead will run this project. So if you do have collaborators um, such as institutions or universities, you could mention what their role is. And there is a question in submittable on the application form that talks about partners and collaborations and what their role is. So do mention very clearly in terms of what their role is. Of course, if you have any documentation from them that would strengthen the quality and the feasibility of your application, uh, but it's not a mandatory requirement, but definitely it's something that you would need to articulate that it's a it's it's a it's a partnership that you have already, and that is a strong partnership that will continue. Uh, Devika, I've already responded to Raksha, so you can go to okay. the next one. Great. Okay. Another question from Shikha. Can we take? Sorry, I'm not able to see that question. Yeah. Can we take a hypothetical space for a measurable scope of work, um, and budgets? Shikha, if you can just elaborate a little bit on that question. Uh, what do you mean by? Um... Yes, hi. Uh, so uh, I wanted to elaborate basically on uh, so uh, in terms of products, for example, if I have uh, so since like I am actually working in sustainable furniture space. So now if I want to uh, think in terms of a uh, scope of work that, you know, by by the end of one year, I am committing to be creating, say, thousand pieces of furniture, for example. So, so I need to just have a sense of that. Am I designing that for the specific space, uh, so that it it brings in a workable budget, or uh, how how to go about, you know, uh, thinking it in scale for one year at least. So I think so. Obviously, I mean, the fifteen thousand cap on the budget is not going to cover. Uh, you know, if, if for the in the in the case of the example that you mentioned, obviously, like the fifteen thousand pound budget would not cover taking space into consideration as well. But in this case, then I think what you'd have to do is demonstrate how strong your model is and how the model can be used in different kinds of spaces. So if you can demonstrate that, then that's something that you know that that we can 
you know, that can be considered. So focus a little bit more on the model rather than the space, I would say, and focus on articulating how this model can be taken from one space to another and can be basically just transformed and evolved um, as time goes by. So in your one year, basically, you would just be focusing on, you know, one year of the British Council funding, you would basically be focusing on developing this model um, and testing it out to work in different spaces. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, it does. Yeah, got it. Thanks. Cool. I'll just take a few more questions in the chat and then we'll just go to the hands. There's two hands. Um, OK, the next question is from Vera. Usually institutions, especially education institutions, will have a prerequisite of allocating a percentage of grant towards their admin or management. If you're applying an affiliation with them, <clears throat> Do you have any tips or advice of how to go about this budget wise? So you can account for about 10 to 15 percent of the overall budget uh, to cover admin and staff costs. Uh, but mm. please ensure that it's not above 10 to, you know, somewhere between 10 to 15 percent is an ideal formula. Anything above that, um, you know, it's a small grant as well. So anything above that will take away a lot from your delivery budget. So 10 to 15 percent is fine. I hope that answers your question, Vera. Yeah. Yeah. We may have to go a bit because we only have five more minutes. There's one around uh, language. Yeah. Uh, does it have to only be focused on English language, for example, if someone is doing a film, or can they include local language versions as well? Local language versions should be fine, but then again, focus on what area of impact that you're working on. Focus on how your film will be accessible to different kinds of audiences. So if you have subtitles um, in English, I think that's fine. It will be a wider reach. Um, or if you have a model where the film can be replicated with different kinds of, you, know, you can choose different languages in which to view and experience the film in, that should be fine. Um, yeah. So, There's yeah. one on yeah one on multiple art forms. Uh, is that all? Do you encourage the project design using multiple forms of art yeah. based on climate change issues? Yeah. Yes. Yes, okay, you so can, it's, no interdisciplinary. On it's interdisciplinary yeah. and we're looking at using, we can go a little bit over five minutes for those who can stay. Okay. Um, so that's fine. We can go up to another 15, yeah. 20 minutes. That's fine. Yeah. There's still questions around the number of grants and how it would be divided. So I don't know if you want to again, just reiterate about this, because I think there's still some confusion about would it be grants up to 15,000 pounds GBP for each of eight to 10 projects? Or would it be 15,000 GBP as whole to be divided among all? No, so eight to 10 projects, all of them. So each selected grantee will get 15,000 pounds to deliver their project. OK, great. So I think that and someone asked the total projects will be eight, but then we're looking at potentially if there's really outstanding, I'm guessing, projects, yeah. then we try yeah. to extend it to 10. Correct. OK, that's right. Um, then there are a couple more questions around our artistic institutions such rather than non-governmental, but we work through cultural tools and approach and concentrate on artistic focused activities. Are we fit yes. for applying according to the el eligibility criteria? Yes, you don't have to be an artistic institution, but you can be working with cultural tools. Uh, you can be working with creative in the creative sector, but not necessarily identify as an artistic institution. That's totally fine. And yes, and I, I think the whole idea of this is also that interdisciplinary connection. Uh, so we're happy. Uh, to consider yeah. these applications. Yeah. Uh, can a consortium of organizations apply? Yes, um, a consortium okay. may apply. However, just be very clear in terms of um, in, in terms of who the project lead is. And in your application, just be very clear in terms of the responsibilities, the roles and responsibilities of each of the people involved. OK, great. Do you want to go to any of the uh, people with hands raised? There are still more questions, but we can go to maybe uh, Badno because they've had their hands yeah. up for a while. Badno, do you yeah. want to come in? Hi, uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Sorry, I'm in a shooting in, in it uh, right now, so there is a lot of noise. I'm uh, sorry for that, everyone. 
Um, That's uh, fine. The question I had is actually the way I see sustainable work uh, in area, any area of my you know, country or wherever. Uh, mostly I feel that it is a long-term project. Otherwise, I do not get to see the output whenever I work in the field with the root, uh, root level people. So basically in that case, uh, uh, you have discussed it though, but uh, the 15,000 grant, uh, you know, there, uh, for pilot projects, there, there are, uh, for any projects, for pilot, we need some kind of budget. Then if we go to first phase and second phase and third phase to actually make the project sustainable to, uh, you know, work with uh, the beneficiaries and getting the, uh, at least nearest uh, output we were looking for. Sometimes it takes a lot, and you know, uh, sometimes it, it takes us to longer the project than expected. So at this stage, when you were talking about model, and I'm guessing pilot uh, pilot model definitely, would, what can be prototype, but. What if, um, if I uh, provide a pilot model and want to execute it within a year, but uh, probably later I have phase one, phase two, and phase three. In that case, does British, uh, British Council provide any kind of further support? So that was my question. And that's a very good question. At this stage, we can only confirm support for this financial year, like for, for, for the round of this grant. We can't really confirm any further support for the next financial year just because of, um, you know, just because of, you know, there's a certain cycle of budgets. And once that's been clear, we, we cannot, uh, we cannot really promise that. And we will not be you know, giving top up grants at this stage in the next in the next financial year. But we can support the model. We can support, uh, you know, we can consider initial R&D stage of projects and we can consider stage one of projects. Um, and of course, you know, we do hope that the grant will help you to get more funding from other places in phase two and phase three and how many other phases you have to sort of build and develop the project. But but you can apply for phase one, basically. Okay, thank you. Um, there's another question from Imali. Do you want to come in? Yes. Uh, uh, Hi. Yeah. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Hi, Deka. Um, I Hello. think my question is related to um something that was raised previously too. Um, so we are basically an I N. I mean, registered as NGO, but um. Uh, or, uh, I mean, the core of what we do is we're an education institute um, teaching a curriculum that's particularly on sustainable automation. So that's why we're interested in anything that is to do with climate action um, or um, you know, climate change initiatives. So we just want to know, um, is that okay for us to apply as an education institute? Yes, it's okay to apply as an education institute. Only the outcome of, of your project or the beneficiaries of your project will need to be people in the creative sector or a creative process or an artistic process. So basically, you could be looking at building a course for adaptation of you know climate action in the creative industries um, or for arts organizations across the country that you're based in. Uh, but, um, you know, you could apply as an education institute as long as your beneficiaries and your target audiences are, is the arts sector. Okay, gotcha. And I've got a quick second question. So can we partner with creative art organizations or global institutes that align with our delivery, which is more or less in, in what you said as, and it will demonstrate um, the creative impact fully. Yes, you can partner, but just ensure that you're thinking about the budget as well, because it's fifteen thousand pounds, and usually when you bring on a partner on board, like it just you know, it, from global institutions, it could become a little expensive. So think about like what they're actually going to do, and when you're filling in the application, be very articulate in terms of you know what your institution is going to do, what the partners are going to do, and then you know where where the output is going to be. So think about all of that. Okay, uh, thank you so much. We got just relating to partners. There was a question around: Can you have collaborators, um, you know, outside the country or outside as the South Asia region? Can yes, team members have... or collaborators be from countries outside the South Asia region. Yes, you may have collaborators from outside South Asia. However, the delivery area will need to be 
within the South Asian countries and the benefit of your project needs to be for South Asian, for the South Asian creative sector. Okay. I think we only have two more people with hands up. Do you want to just close that? Uh, Fabia? Yeah. Fabia, do you want to come in? I'm not sure if I there's again. Yeah. Fabia, Maybe if you want to type your if you want to type your question in the chat box. Just yeah. put it and there. And then there's Ahmed, who I think also had a had their yeah. hand up. Do you want to come in as well? Yeah, they might be maybe in oh yeah hopefully not an un, i hope it's not a mute issue if so then just type in if that's okay can you, can you hear me? Y yes but very quiet very, very it's very soft oh uh okay so i'll try um or I'll... we can't hear you emma if you can just put your question in the chat box uh, one is focused say on storytelling one is focused on um, uh, research, et cetera. So we cannot, uh, uh, the, but, but they're, they're different entities, they're, they're completely different entities. So can we, everybody's talking about collaborations and everything, right? But can we apply uh, as two different entities for two different projects? Or uh, are you going to see who the lead is and that's it? So you mean as project lead, you can apply for two applications with, you know, as a representative of different universities, is that what you're asking? So, uh, well, I'm 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 not a, a representative of a university, but you know, like I, I run two different platforms. Right. So you're so you'll be the project lead, and you will apply. Yeah. I mean, hypothetically, you will apply two different applications for two different platforms that you represent. Is that right? Okay, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you can, but if both of your projects get get to the final stage of application and only one will be selected. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. Okay, perfect. But we can apply uh, and uh, get, go through the project and then pick and choose which one. we. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. Sure. Yeah, there are some questions around um, in-kind support. Can they expect in-kind support from British Council for certain activities beyond the grant? Example, access to space for exhibitions and installation. I think that depends on, um, that's a good question, but that just depends on uh, the country that you're based in. And it also depends on how much time and capacity the, the staff in, in the country have. But that's a discussion that can be organic. Um, and that can evolve over time. Um, and the mentors who will who we will connect you with will also help you build and forge these connections. Um, so yeah, I mean it's something that that can be discussed mutually. Um, can't be promised right now, but it's just it just depends on the circumstances during that time. Yeah. Uh, do you want to take Nidhi? Yeah, Nidhi, do you want to come in? Hi, Devika. So, Hi. Uh I wanted to know, so let's say if we are making a documentary and we get the grant, would the copyrights then be shared between the uh, maker and British Council or will it go to British Council? So since this is a grant, the copyrights will rest with you um, and you will have full control over, uh, so for example, you know, you will have full control over it afterwards. The British Council will, of course, would like to use it as an example of projects that we funded, or if there's some kind of a screening that's happening anywhere, and we'd like to showcase that film as part of our other programs. Of course, we'd like to sort of, you know, screen that and, you know, just talk to people about these are the kind of projects that we've supported, but legally the full copyright will, will rest with you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, Samira, do you want to come in? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Hi. Um, so you said that only one project per person can be selected. But for example, I'm the lead applicant as an individual artist. Um, so, but if I'm part of another application, just so, let's say as a art, like as a collaborator, you know, supporter, um, like mentioned in another call, like in another application, is that okay? That should is be fine. That's yeah fine. okay so it's it's mainly about the lead applicant the main okay exactly exactly okay thanks thanks a lot fine. fahim do you want to come in 
Uh, yes, sorry. Uh, maybe my mistake that I might have uh, missed that uh, information. There has been a mention of fifteen thousand uh, pounds. Uh, is that a, in sort of an upper limit to uh, the pro the uh, funds, uh, or is it shared in some category? C can you just clarify that? So the funds that are available are fifteen thousand pounds per project, and each of the selected projects will get fifteen thousand pounds. We're looking at supporting eight to 10 projects, uh, so a minimum of eight and a maximum of 10. And as, as I mentioned before, um, there's no sort of um, country wise allocation as such. We're looking at the budget for South Asia in totality, and it just depends on the quality. The highest scoring applications, irrespective of which countries they come from, will be will be awarded. And the upper limit is 10 okay. projects, basically. So yeah. if you have okay. projects that are under 15,000 pounds, that's also fine. You could apply for projects for 7,000 pounds, 8,000 uh, pounds. But 15,000 is that cap, basically. You can't go above that. Yeah, Deka, we're you, now sir. almost, yeah, we're almost 10 minutes over. There's one, I think, an important question that's been raised around sudden political conditions. We had previously been unable to use the internet for yeah. several days a month ago. If any of these situations occur within the timeline, will it be considered, uh, will it be considered the application timeframe or the execution timeline? We will provide, ex uh, you know, ex extensions. Uh, this has been done before. Um, and of course, we completely understand uh, some countries might be, you know, politically vulnerable, etc., and there might be sort of sudden conditions which change. And we're, you know, we're willing to accept these as, um, as grounds to give extension. So that's fine. Okay, I think we're slowly wrapping up. There are a few questions which I can just put them together for you to respond to. Uh, one is around a couple of different types of um, project ideas and art forms. One is around is open mics considered as an art form and also something around children's picture books. Uh, could this with the theme of climate change, could this also be counted as an activity? So I'm just kind of clubbing a couple of questions because they're kind of related, but different um, approaches and art forms. Yeah, so we're open to accepting art forms, different, you know, art forms that span across um, across the sort of, you know, across range from theater and dance to, um, uh, you know, to film to, uh, you know, literature and publications, comic books, etc. We're happy to sort of explore different kinds of art forms. Uh, but I think, like I mentioned before, as opposed to focusing on the form in itself, it's more the process and it's more as in what that particular performance or what that particular piece will do to its audiences and, and you know, whether it's, you know, you know, how sort of scalable and feasible its solution oriented approach is. I think that's something that we largely be looking at. So if, okay. if your particular art form is, is being looked at as a catalyst to drive change, um, then yes, it's something that we can accept. Great. And I think one last from Sanjay, and I think we may need to close up. Uh, Sanjay, do you want to go ahead? OK, I don't think it's. Sanjay, you'll need to unmute. OK, I think. Yeah, please I apologize think Sanjay's Sanjay. just no, Yeah, uh, they've got this also, then the last few, and then we're sort of done. Um, yeah, I can there take is, a few more well, questions. He's asked to, yeah, uh, there's one around. Is there an age limit to apply? I mean, you have to be above 18 um, to apply. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to. So, Shakya, just to answer your question, you have to be above 18. <clears throat> and if your project focuses on people under 18, there are certain safeguarding processes that you will need to follow, and it's all mentioned in the FAQs and the guidance. So, anything above 18 should be fine. Uh, can uh, the there's project another question. Be... Yeah, go there's ahead. Question I think you can take from... this. Yeah, there's another question from Faryal. Can some area of the project be paid for? Yes, some area of the project can be paid for from your personal finances or from the institution, like the, the platform that you're supporting or the institute that you're supporting. Um, it can be paid for by somebody else, but just ensure that um, these details are mentioned very clearly in the application form. Can there be two leads? So the so Shakya, the project based the, the submittable application form will allow you only to submit via one lead. Uh, so yeah, so you'll have to have one lead and then you can mention the other person as a collaborator. 
um, and, and, you know, be very articulate in terms of what everyone's involved in doing. Can the project be bilingual? Um, yes, the project can be bilingual as long as you're demonstrating um, the bilingual area as reaching out to certain areas of population that will not understand English. Um, and as long as it's, you know, in the spirit of accessibility, I think, and diversity, I think that's fine. Um, there's another question around, is there a specific theme that we need to follow when proposing the project? So um, at the start of the presentation, I mentioned a few themes around knowledge creation, sustainable practices, and design innovation. And these are some of the three themes that we're looking at. Um, we will share this presentation with everybody who's attended today, so you'll have a clearer look um, at the presentation as well. Uh, what if, so Ria Maria has asked a question, what if the impact is on this education sector through the art form? That should be fine as long as um, you're applying via an art form and the level and the scope and the scale of the impact is articulated very strongly. I think that should be fine. Um, there's another question from Roshan. Are we supposed to mention the artist who will be working on the project prior? Yes, uh, the project, when you're applying to the project, you will need to mention everyone else that's working on it as well. I think Sanjay is back. Do you want to do you want to come in? Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, OK, thank yes. you. Uh, sorry if I have asked uh, double uh, asked it again because my Internet is fluctuating and uh, that's why I'm getting okay. a little bit from uh, I just want to ask, uh, is there the uh, number? Do we mention the number in proposal like uh, this much video I, I, I'm going to make or this much uh, theater artist we are going to uh, yes. theater uh, we are going to do this much act? Uh, the number has to be uh, yes. mentioned. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes, you will have to have a very clear outline. Fahim, and then I'll go to the question from Sara. Fahim, do you want to come in? Yes, just uh, sorry, I, I keep coming back. Um, I have this uh, question that in order for a such a project to have more sustainability and scalability, I guess some part of the project should be able to make money on its own as well. Uh, is is that a problem uh, when it comes to you know accepting the proposals that uh, we'll be making some money off of the uh, work that we'll we are going to be doing? Um, is it going to be in the year of the British Council funding or is it something that you're going to expect to happen after the funding, after year one of the funding? I mean, if we begin it during that period, then of course, uh, the sustainability of it is going to be possible uh, after that cycle as well. Uh, or else we will have to then restart and then find, you know, additional funds for it to uh, be made yeah. into uh, something that is going to go on for longer for us to keep it sustainable. Yeah, that makes sense. So if if it's something that, you know, that the British Council funds have helped you set up and sort of, you know, develop the idea a little bit and the idea in itself is like, uh, you know, it's it's you know, it's 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 an idea that's going to bring in funds to self-sustain, then I think that's fine. But as long as if the funds are being used, like as, as if it's for profit, then that's something that, you know, we can, I can just consult with, uh, with my team and get back to you on. Um, but I think at this stage, if it's something that's going to help sustain the model and evolve and build it, then that's fine. Yeah, that's that's uh, the goal. So that was the concern. Thanks. Thank you so much. I, I'd be waiting for that uh, response. Yeah. Sarah, do you want to come in? Okay. Uh, Sarah, yes. I think you're on mute. Control shift and. Yeah, tell me. OK, I'm not able to hear Sarah, but I'm just going to look at your question and oh, OK, am, am I audible now? Hello? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, OK, this is Sarah here. Uh, I'm yeah. from Karachi, Pakistan. So uh, I'm an architect and uh, a PhD scholar. I'm doing a PhD these days and I am assistant professor at an architecture institute. 
So we were thinking that a group of people, like two or three people, uh, all architects and urban planners to participate in this. And we don't have an artist to to be a partner for this. So is, is it okay if we plan, if we apply and me being the principal applicant for this? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's something that we can accept. However, you will need to ensure, just like the example that I gave, if your project is talking about sort of bringing communities together or challenging sort of uh, certain norms, which are, you know, which are detrimental to the environment. And if it's something that, you know, you are using as a prototype to address some of these challenges, it's something that we can accept. But but talk a little bit about the social development and the social impact. Um, yeah, definitely. That's that's the plan. Actually, yeah. I would like to have uh, the recording of this meeting because I just missed a lot of part of it. So that's we'll fine. We have shared, a, uh, the link. Yes, yes, we'll be sharing a link, and we have another information session which will be on the same lines as this one on the twenty second of October. So if you'd like to attend that as well, please feel free to register uh, for that, and we'll share okay. share the recording of this as well. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Um, another question from Shakya, the costing in the application will be tentative at the point of submitting. If there are any changes during implementation, can we utilize the received budget within the project on? Yes, that's fine. We totally understand that at the time of application, uh, the costing will be tentative um, and things change. Uh, so as long as it's a, it's a reasonable change, that's something that we should be OK with. There's a question from Soma. Can the beneficiaries be children? Yes, the beneficiaries can be children. However, if you are working with children, there are very stringent and rigid safeguarding guidelines that the British Council follows. And all of this information is in the application briefing notes and in the FAQs. So please have a look at the safeguarding section. It's right at the bottom. Um, and there will be loads of like consent letters um, and safeguarding sort of, um, uh, you know, consent, etc. that you will need to tick off before you carry on with the project. So yes, they can be children, but just keep in mind that there will be lots of reporting um, on it that you will need to do prior to delivering the project. Uh, so another question from Sanjay, can NGOs and not-for-profit making companies apply? Do they fall in category of funding bodies? So as long as the primary role of an organization is not providing funds, NGOs and profit and, and other companies can apply, not for profits can apply, as long as they are not engaged in the business of granting and providing funds to other organizations that should be fine. Uh, sorry, just to add to that, uh, if the NGO, the not for profit is based in India, um, their FCRA will apply. Just wanted to add that. So if Sanjay, if your organization or your NGO is from India, uh, based in India, sorry, yeah. then please note that FCRA is applicable. Yeah. I think I've covered all of the questions in the chat box, but if you feel like there's something that's not been very clear or you need more clarification or anything, please feel free to reach out to us via the MS Teams forms and Maliha has already shared the link with you all. So Please engage with us via the forms. Please have a look at the websites. Um, do download um, all of the guiding documents on the website. And uh, we wish you all the best with your application. We wish you all the best with accessing all of this information. Um, and we hope you do have the interest uh, and the time to apply to this. Thank you so much for attending, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.